Hey guys, Crypto Sunday, and it's been a pretty good week. Uh, £36,000 up, or uh, 8%, so a bit uh, surprising, considering sort of Bitcoin's been all over the place, really. Uh, it's just come back below uh, 70000 but it's sort of hovering around there. Uh, again, no surprise, this is sort of all-time high price. Uh, it's not really surprising that you get a month or two, or uh, maybe even more, uh, sort of hovering around... Uh, around the all-time high it's a big um sort of hurdle to uh, get over and but it seems to be while that's happening uh, the altcoins are doing or some of the altcoins are doing sort of reasonably well and sort of making up for uh, bitcoin staying flat for a little while so all good uh, but let's have a look at some of the news so as expected the coin shares uh, report is a little bit negative uh, nearly um, 1 billion or 942 million in outflow uh, we saw the um, the outflows sort of in the uh, the weekly or the daily data so yeah it's uh, it's one week of outflows but compared to all these sort of record high inflows that's uh, that's fine and yeah sort of looking at uh, individual coins it's uh, largely bitcoin of course um, grayscale outflows from um, selling from the sort of ftx wallets and the genesis wallets and uh, all sorts but it looks like that may sort of die down soon bit of outflow as well in some of the other tokens uh, you had 34 million in uh, ethereum outflows and that sort of uh, 46 million month to date uh, multi-asset this uh, sort of fund that we still haven't really seen uh, I'm sort of dug into where that is 3 billion in uh, assets under management so it's quite big um, that's down 7.3 million uh, Solana down 5.6 million uh, up Litecoin in the green uh, 2 million but it's a very uh, small fund short Bitcoin coming off as well people sort of taking profits I guess or uh, However, sort of small profit you can get shorting Bitcoin at the moment. Uh, small inflow into XRP, a uh, bit of an outflow in from Cardano, and a reasonable outflow in uh, Polkadot again. Um, yeah, people seem to be getting into that. Five million for a total of uh, 50 million assets under management. Obviously, it's absolutely tiny, but sort of on a relative basis, it's uh, increasing and yeah by country uh it's sort of red mostly um germany small outflow and then sort of reasonably big outflows for sweden and switzerland uh inflows again into brazil and uh into canada but they're yeah, obviously us 860 million so interesting brazil sort of um a few weeks of uh, inflows now small but uh but good to see sort of a country you don't hear about too much and then on the daily uh, etf flows we've only got four days this week because it's a uh, good friday week uh, i am recording on saturday because i'm uh, i'm busy tomorrow morning but uh, yeah we've got all four of the uh, daily inflows and they were all positive so the sort of uh, in theory the grayscale uh, genesis selling we think this is genesis selling around here is uh, dying down again uh, grayscale sort of coming down to 200 300 but then a 100 million uh, outflow on uh, thursday and sort of some of the other etfs picking back up uh, fidelity was sort of low for quite a bit they had two uh, 200 million days in a row so that was quite good and then sort of a bit light and sort of this it's spotty all over all over the etfs really um, arc had a 200 million day so yeah, not too bad. They're at sort of 2.3, 2.5 2 billion, I think. And so to have a 200 million inflow, um, that is pretty good. Um, and Bitcoin, the uh, iShares, Bitcoin one, um, sort of, as I say, a bit uh, choppy, sort of double figures and then uh, 300 million back to double figures on, uh, on the Thursday. But I expect this is partly inflows partly people taking profits uh, some of these people are obviously up you know 30 40 50 percent uh, since the etfs were launched so they're very happy with 50 percent in uh, two months you can't really blame them for for taking profits or uh, selling entirely 
So this was on the front page of uh, BBC News. Uh, it's obviously even outside the uh, crypto world. This is big news. Uh, Sam Bankman-Fried getting 25 years for fraud. Uh, this is a federal uh, sentence, so it seems he has to serve a minimum of 20 years. Um, thought he might get more. Uh, he sort of had the uh, Bernie made off some people get, you know, two life sentences sort of. And uh, he and he was older when he started, I suppose, but he ended up dying uh, in prison. And you have uh, Ross Ulbricht, the uh, sort of founder of the Silk Road, uh, which you could say sort of defrauded a lot less people. A lot less people uh, lost money on it, but of course it was illegal activity. Um, I believe he got two life sentences plus 40 years uh, without parole. So they're basically saying we want you to die in prison. Um, so 25 years for uh, stealing sort of 10 billion dollars uh, I think is a little bit light uh, I do wonder if sort of the it's looking like potentially um, pretty much all of their customers will get paid out um, the dollar amount that they held uh, when they went bust which isn't quite so fair uh, a lot of people I guess on the outside will see that as well you got your money back but say you held um one bitcoin you know when they went under um that was say twenty thousand dollars you know it's now seventy thousand dollars and you're getting paid out twenty thousand dollars um that was sort of bitcoin at a low point um at the end towards the end of the 2022 bear market um yeah some people will uh, like say on the outside they'll say well you got your money back but you didn't really because uh, you weren't sort of leveraging it you weren't expecting it to be stolen holding it on an exchange so yeah to get back your dollar amount is probably a little unfair but maybe the courts will see it as you know if everyone gets their dollar amount uh, back then it's not the worst thing in the world it's not like 10 billion has been uh, fully lost so yeah maybe they were a bit more lenient um, and maybe they see him as a a young guy, you know, maybe a little bit naive and sort of got ahead of himself, but it's still a crime. So 25 years. So MicroStrategy has had a short report come out uh, from Kerasade Capital. Uh, they are short MicroStrategy and long Bitcoin. So, yeah, don't worry, they're not going to uh, suddenly lose a fortune if uh, micro if Bitcoin uh, goes up because we're all expecting Bitcoin to go up. This is basically saying Bitcoin itself should outperform uh, micro strategy and that uh, premium should come down. Uh, obviously, you can, you know, micro strategies outperformed. It could still become a cropper on this if uh, people still keep uh, believing in Michael Saylor and sort of increase in that premium. Um, but yeah, they, certainly on sort of I think Wednesday and Thursday they sort of fell a reasonable amount. Uh, Thursday they fell 14% at the peak, and yeah, this short report is basically sort of what I've been saying for a while. Um, they're a you know they're at 28 billion dollar market cap. They were a bit more than that. Um, and another I I would say you have to add on the uh, I think they have two billion in um, non convertible debt. So the convertible debt is sort of basically always going to become stock because uh, if we think Bitcoin's uh, going to carry on rising, the share price should rise. So, yeah, the convertible debt will generally get uh, turned into uh, stock. It's basically the same as just selling shares. Um, but though I think they have two billion in non-convertible debt and the company makes 500 million a year in revenue and that isn't very profitable at all. So... I don't see how they would ever pay that two billion back without uh, just selling Bitcoin and paying paying that back. So to me, it's thirty billion dollars even after this drop, um, with uh, fifteen point two billion of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So I personally wouldn't give it uh, a particularly big premium. You know, the premium is there because they could issue more shares and uh, and buy bitcoin with it and that's sort of at the moment worth doing because they're at a huge premium but it's sort of a chicken and the egg like why does the premium exist because they could do it you know if the premium went away tomorrow then there would be no reason for them to uh, to dilute um, they could also issue non-convertible debt i suppose borrow at five percent buy bitcoin and then you know assuming it goes up 
a lot more than five percent in a year that is sort of profitable for the company and is essentially leveraged bitcoin uh, without sort of you could call it a leveraged bitcoin ecf without an expense ratio but so far for the last i think for the last year or so they haven't uh, taken on non-convertible debt so if the only debt they're taking out is diluting you then it's basically just an unlevered uh, bitcoin etf without a uh, an expense ratio but you know the expense ratios of the us etfs are so low that uh, I don't see why anyone sees this as massively profitable. So unless the other reason is you're just buying because it's Michael Saylor, then, yeah, I kind of agree with uh, Kerosade Capital. Uh, the sort of short micro strategy and long Bitcoin uh, seems an interesting trade. A lot of people wondering whether we're getting into sort of bubble times as well, because we had uh, sort of Dogecoin and uh, Shiba Inu sort of in the last cycle. Um, as sort of a, an indication of the top of the market and we're getting sort of meme coins flying up at the moment uh, dogecoin is back top 10 and is sort of 30 or 25 billion dollars i think for sort of very little uh, underlying adoption or anything uh, other than sort of maybe elon might use it but that's still a maybe um, nothing seems to have come of it and you've also got the newest one a dog with hat you know it's uh, not exactly highbrow stuff, but that is now uh, over $3 billion, I believe. Uh, it's overtaken Arbitrum now. So, yeah, you're getting all these meme coins overtaking sort of quite uh, quite prominent projects. And, yeah, people are sort of saying this could be a, a sign of sort of bubble territory. But I'm struggling to believe that uh, just breaking all-time highs is going to be the top. You know, we had a... A sixty-four thousand dollar top in um, twenty twenty-one, and sort of it went a little bit higher to uh, pretty much where we are now. So uh, to think all the inflation and everything and uh, money printing that has gone on since then, that seventy thousand again would be the top of the market. Uh, I just don't see it. Just it may happen that uh, meme coins are coming a little bit earlier uh, this cycle. But yeah, good for uh, anybody that's been in sort of. Pepe and Floki and uh, and Dog with Hat. It is a lovely knitted hat, of course. This is interesting as well. Larry Fink still sort of doing the uh, the tour, and he got asked whether um, uh, Ethereum being labelled a security would damage the uh, the ETF application, and he has said um, he thinks it still could could go ahead um, even if Ethereum is labelled a security. So they would just run it as as a, a securities offering, and it's still interesting. So yeah, maybe he is just being sort of bullish on everything, trying to uh, drive fees because they uh, they certainly have they've got the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs, as he notes. Um, I do think sort of that is a little bit of a um, an obvious. Uh, record because if you're going back to sort of spy and uh, the s p 500 etfs and uh, the gold ones they are an awfully uh, long time ago and um, yeah obviously you've had a hell of a lot of money printing since then and uh, monetary inflation so even just to uh, add on for the inflation it's not surprising that it's the biggest uh, etf launch of all time um, it's a little bit like when uh, you know, steadily growing companies say uh, every year we've had record profits. And you think, well, you kind of expect you to. You're growing at, you know, 5 10% a year. It should be record profits. But, yeah, it's good for uh, good for Larry to uh, sort of highlight that uh, ETH being labelled to security wouldn't put them off, at least. Got to poke a little bit of fun at uh, Craig Wright as well, because that's always enjoyable. Um, the UK court have uh, frozen £6 million of his assets uh, because they think he may move them offshore and sort of, I guess, maybe declare himself bankrupt in the UK and move abroad and uh, not pay his court fees because he uh, quite famously lost. He is not uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. That sort of cloud over Bitcoin is... Uh, it seems gone unless he's gonna try and dig it up again yeah freezing his assets is all sort of getting a bit nasty now 
um, that was in the uh, 14th of March decision, uh, said he isn't Sasoshi. I haven't really read what he's uh, what he said about it. I just think, you know, leave him to his stuff now. But yeah, had to point that out. It's a nice little development from uh, Google as well. They're uh, introducing sort of crypto wallet balances into the search functionality. So uh, you can search for an address and it will show you uh, the balance of whatever crypto is in that wallet. Um, hasn't sort of quite worked for me. I did try it. They sort of show, you know, because uh, they don't have to be a great big long string of um, of letters and numbers now with the Ethereum name service. You can have something like uh, Vitalik.eth. And yeah, they're sort of showing just Googling that and nothing else. And it shows you sort of an Ethereum balance and uh, presumably other other token balances on there as well. But I mean, I put it into Google and it doesn't uh, doesn't come up with that. So maybe it's sort of a beta version of uh, Chrome or something. But yeah, it didn't work for me. But maybe it's something they're rolling out uh, shortly. But I thought this was uh, a decent sort of little development. You know, people putting sort of bitcoin addresses in and just sort of uh, you don't have to then go on as they say like ether scan and uh, various other services it's all just within google so they're sort of making some interesting moves towards the crypto industry even if it isn't you know what everyone would like putting uh, sort of a few billion of their balance sheet into crypto as a bit of a diversification uh, i don't think anybody's going to be doing that quite yet i think that still needs a bit more sort of regulation and uh, acceptance from from governments but yeah it's a nice little development it's not done a lot for ethereum though uh, recently certainly um the ethereum price has been doing okay but the ethereum bitcoin ratio which i sort of keep an eye on uh, has been falling and he's sort of right at this magical level of uh, 0 0.05 now uh, sort of going back to my um, great big wedge pattern that I was sort of looking at and potentially thinking to uh, sort of get to the bottom of this wedge and I would exchange some of my uh, Bitcoin for Ethereum uh, it sort of went below and then sort of went back into it and I thought well time's over but um, yeah it has sort of come back into there now and it's steadily falling down um, I think this is Partly sort of um, bearishness on uh, whether their their theory with all the layer twos can sort of really play out. I mean, I've been sort of using um, you know some of the layer twos base and uh, sort of various other layer twos and having to bridge assets to them, and it is sort of all a little bit complicated, really. Uh, whether sort of further developments on Ethereum can simplify this a little bit, but. Compared to sort of me starting out on Solana, uh, everything just seems an awful lot simpler on Solana. Uh, obviously, the the money is still on Ethereum. The bulk of sort of assets are still on Ethereum, total value locked and that sort of thing. But yeah, whether I want to be sort of putting, um, I've done a little bit of napkin maths and I think I want to be transferring about 15,000 into something. But yeah, sort of putting it into Ethereum. I'm starting to have my doubts, really. But, yeah, we'll keep an eye on, on the ratio, for sure. Um, just looking at the burning, um, it has sort of gone back to uh, a, a small net burn. Uh, 3,150 Ethereum down in the last seven days. Uh, but it certainly slowed down. Uh, it did sort of go into uh, inflation for a little while. Um, on the 30 days, it's sort of levelled out and... Uh, yeah, you can see it's sort of pretty much leveling out on the, on the long term as well. But whether this is just one of those, um, you know, leveling out periods before a great big drop, as I say, you can't sort of take seven days with, uh, with too much significance because this chart has been very, very up and down. But yeah, seven days at least, sort of not doing a huge amount. So looking at coins for the week, uh, Bitcoin is up 8.4%. That's pretty good, although obviously sort of it's been uh, higher than it is now. Um, even though my portfolio is sort of pretty much at all time high now because of uh, other coins. Um, Solana, namely, up 11% for the week. That's 
pretty good. So that's nearing um, a high for this cycle. Uh, Ethereum up 4.4%, so underperforming. Chainlink up 3%. Uh, Cardano up 3.6%. Um, XRP up 0.8%. Um, Gala up 7.7%. Audius up 12.7%. That's doing pretty well. Uh, Power Ledger up 12%. So that's been uh, slightly outperforming. And then the coin for the week, Internet Computer. Um, obviously, it's been lagging uh, quite a lot for uh, the first sort of few months of this uptrend and last year. But that's up 35% for the week. So pretty good there. Uh, Polygon is 1% uh, up. So he's rapidly becoming one of my smaller holdings now. Uh, I need to move it down this list. Um, Quant up 9%. That's not too bad. Uh, basic attention token up 11.3 and v chain up 11.3 so as i say i need to um looks like sell about fifteen thousand pounds worth i'll probably do uh, bitcoin um to sort of lock in some uh, capital gains tax and a sort of low rate of capital gains tax and it's looking like rather than uh, put that into ethereum i may be sort of timing that with the the new ISA season, obviously we're uh, rapidly approaching the 6th of April. I may sort of time that sell with uh, the turn of the tax year and put it into the ISA and I think put it into Riot platforms, uh, depending on where sort of price moves in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. So leave your thoughts in uh, comments below. Maybe keep an eye out uh, if I can do a... Uh, Riot versus Clean Spark video, uh, probably Monday. And yeah, like and subscribe. See you soon.